Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Tiny11 23H2, which is the newest edition of Tiny11 that NT Dev just released about two days ago at this point. This build of Tiny11 promises to bring bug and stability improvements, as well as a few new features focusing on gaming, performance, and things like that. I'm really excited to take a look at this build. I've been a very supportive person of NT Dev's Tiny10 and Tiny11 projects for a while actually just because I think they're so interesting and so unique so I'm very excited to take a look here at this build and what could possibly lie inside of it. It's been over I think I want to say it's been six months but I could be wrong since the last build of Tiny10 which was 23H1 sorry Tiny11 23H1 um, yeah so I'm excited to see that they've finally made some improvements here that we're finally getting a new version so as we can see, it is using the native Windows 11 installer, which I am a little surprised about because typically like when you're bypassing like the TPM requirements, it doesn't use the Windows 11 installer. It typically uses like a Windows 10 installer. Um, but this one has managed to find a way to get Windows 11 to work. So, all right, we are now installing Tiny11 23H2. All right, and here we are booting into Tiny11 23H2. This build does have an out-of-box experience, which previous builds of Windows or Tiny11 have, but I know that some other custom, like, littler versions of Windows typically skip the oob and jump straight into, like, a pre-made user account and things like that. So I am happy to see that, you know, NT Dev has kept the out-of-box experience, and I just feel like it gives a little bit of, like, a personal touch to the operating system rather than just jumping into an account that someone already pre-configured for you. Now, I know in the past um, that win uh, Windows updates have been a problem for Tiny11, um, but I believe that um, Tiny11 actually fixed this. Um, I know in earlier builds of Tiny10 you couldn't update, but earlier or recent builds of Tiny11, Windows update did function. One thing I do want to point out is this ISO is 4.2 gigabytes, which is actually pretty close to the original size of the Windows 11 ISO. So I know that the Tiny 11 builds have gotten up there in size over the years. I know they used to be like a few hundred megabytes, and now they're almost as big as a real legitimate Windows 11 ISO. So that's something I just wanted to point out because I, I don't know what's being packed in the ISOs. I really don't. Um, or why they're so large. All right, and here we are inside of Tiny11. The first thing I wanna do before we install VMware tools is take a look at actually what we're using here. So on a two gigabyte system, we are using one gigabyte of RAM. Wow, that is a lot of RAM for Tiny11 to be using. Um, 965, so we're still idling about a gigabyte. We're using about 11% of our disk usage, or now six, uh, it's ranging right now. As for disk space, we are using 11 gigabytes roughly, which, wow, is not as tiny as I remember Tiny11. But at the same time, I do guess, I guess you have to compromise on, on some things. You do have to compromise, you know, do you want to be able to update Windows or do you want to have a ridiculously small Tiny11 installation? And those are the things that you kind of have to weigh um, when you're kind of developing something like this. Um, so if I could actually put VMware tools in the CD drive, that would be great. Um, but I don't, it's not, there we go. Let's go ahead and install VMware tools, which VMware tools shouldn't take up that much more space, but it's just something that I do. I just want to show like, hey, before, before VMware tools starts using 10 megabytes of RAM, um, just, you know, because when you're looking at tiny 11 builds like this, the megabytes do add up, or at least they used to before it used a gigabyte of RAM just idling after a clean install. I really do remember NT Dev's builds using way less space and way less RAM than this. Maybe I'm just remembering things wrong, but I, I feel like I recall these things using way less RAM. So let's go ahead and switch this off so we can upscale. And here we are. So by default, this looks like your typical install Windows 11. Recycle bin, Edge, you know, this is your typical stuff. Even Windows Defender is on here, which I do like that from a cybersecurity standpoint. You do have built-in virus and threat protection straight out of the box. Going into settings, or going to all apps, rather, we have accessibility features, calculator, file explorer, get started, Edge, store, notepad, OneDrive, which you could definitely take that out, paint, settings sticky notes terminal security and windows tools so that's your typical application set for tiny 11. um taking a look at what else is in here chat is gone 
Oh my, that's another widget. I know in previous builds, widgets was also hidden, but that appears like that is back. Um, widgets are now in this build, which is again, I feel like another thing that could be removed here. Um, going into settings, all of our settings are available here to take a look at. Uh, this version of Windows is Windows 11 Pro 22H2. Um, actually, it is one of the newest OS builds, I believe. I believe that's, pr that's pretty high up there. Uh, making sure Windows Update works. Let's double check and check for update to make sure that it's actually able to detect updates and things like that from Windows servers. And yep, it is downloading those updates. Uh, nothing too big, just a cumulative update, um, Defender updates, anti-malware, things like that. I still can't get over the fact that it's using 11 gigabytes. Oh, now we're actually using 12. I feel like at one point it used way, way, way less than it is now. I, I'm not very impressed with this right now, um, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but nonetheless, it is still impressive that, you know, I know Windows 11 does use a lot, and maybe someone or even NT Dev can enter some, um, enter some input on why it's using so much RAM, or am I just going crazy here? Do I not recall when or older builds using this much RAM? Or, in fact, what services, and we can actually look at that ourselves, what services are actually taking up so much memory? Uh, Microsoft Edge, which isn't even running. Um, the Windows Defender is using a considerable amount of RAM. Something I do want to note is there is not a lot of processes running, which is good. Um, Windows Installer is running. I'm not sure what it's installing or if that's just something that runs in the background. Um, but yeah. So with that being said, this was just a brief overview of Tiny1123H2. This is a new build of Tiny11 that I am excited to see how it gets used and what your guys' opinions and thoughts are. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new on here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.